Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Almost any pilot will tell you that the hardest part of their job isn't the flying, but the landing. Indeed, bringing an aircraft weighing tens of thousands of pounds down to Earth can be challenging enough. But what about cases where runway length is limited? And what about situations where a large plane might need to land on a smaller runway? Finally, what about emergencies regarding landing gear or brakes? These are real situations that both commercial and military pilots need to deal with every day. Fortunately, some engineers are exploring new ways to make the process safer than ever before. This is the Engineered Materials Arrestor System, or EMAS. It is essentially a bed of special material placed at the end of a runway for the purpose of stopping an out-of-control aircraft. The materials used in the construction of the EMAS are specifically designed to absorb energy and crush under the weight of the aircraft. The current technology involves concrete blocks, dense enough to bring a plane to a stop after just a few meters. This minimizes not only the chance of injury, but also any damage to the aircraft itself. The engineers behind the EMAS system refer to it as a runaway truck ramp for airplanes. As the forward energy of the plane is redirected into the material, the aircraft simply comes to a stop. Overruns and runway excursions are extremely dangerous, as they often cause the landing gear to buckle, creating friction that could start a fire. The EMAS is the perfect combination of weight and density to bring the plane to a safe, controlled stop. Since the EMAS bed is modular in design, airports need only to replace those specific blocks affected by the out-of-control aircraft. More importantly, the airport or landing strip can remain open throughout. Even in ideal landing conditions, problems can arise if the landing gear is not properly maintained and inspected. One of the companies leading the charge on landing gear revitalization and repair is Francis Safran. The company not only designs and manufactures top-of-the-line landing gear systems, but it has done so for companies like Airbus, Boeing, and Suhoi. receiving an old or damaged landing gear system, Safran Tex immediately put the materials through a comprehensive four-step process.
first. The landing gear is disassembled and thoroughly cleaned. Next, the parts are carefully inspected for wear or damage. This is done both visually and digitally to ensure the best results. Next, the Saffron team carefully machines and refurbishes each component. The protective coatings are then reapplied, just as they would during the initial construction. Finally, the entire landing gear system is carefully reassembled, resulting in a like-new product that can be confidently reinstalled aboard the aircraft. Of course, not all aircraft land the same way. In the case of aircraft like the B-22 Osprey and F-35B, you have the capacity for vertical takeoffs and landings, not unlike a helicopter. At Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst in New Jersey, the U.S. Air Force Civil Engineer Center asked its engineers to come up with a VTOL landing pad. In this case, the engineers decided on AM2 matting, which is very common for military applications. Each pad consists of four interlocking edges that can be connected to create landing surfaces of various sizes. The result is a landing pad that can be installed virtually anywhere to reduce the strain on aircraft and their landing gear. The United States Air Force also has some ideas about how to effectively stop an out-of-control aircraft. Here at Moody Air Force Base, they've installed and certified the BAK-12 Aircraft Arrest System. This is a multi-disc rotary energy absorbing mechanism, similar to the aft part of an aircraft carrier's catabar system. It consists of an arresting cable that stretches over the runway. The cable is supported by several rubber wheels that lift it just a few inches off the ground. If an aircraft is in trouble or simply needs to come to a quick stop, it can deploy a tail hook to catch the cable. This transfers the energy to a rotary mechanism, allowing for a safe stop. Though most aircraft hope to never find themselves in a difficult landing situation, others are specifically designed for it. Take the Lockheed LC-130 for instance. At 
At first, this plane appears no different from a standard C-130 transport. However, this particular model has been fitted with special skis so that it can more effectively land in the Arctic or Antarctic ice runways. This unique plane was first tested back in 1957, but around 10 of them still remain in use today. Their primary job is to deliver supplies and cargo to remote areas near the poles or continental wilderness. This modified Hercules is well suited to such a task as it boasts a 42,000-pound carrying capacity. Its cargo bay is a full 40 feet long and nearly 10 feet wide. When it comes to austere landings, no aircraft can compete with the A-10 Thunderbolt. This dual-engine combat aircraft was designed with engines high on the tail, which minimizes the risk of them being damaged by debris. The plane also boasts excellent low speed and low altitude maneuverability, giving pilots more of a chance to evaluate their conditions before touching down. Here you can see A-10 pilots performing austere landings and takeoffs on a very rough patch of runway in Poland. Though slow by modern standards, this 50-year-old aircraft remains a favorite among U.S. Air Force pilots. Its ability to land and take off almost anywhere is one major factor in this appreciation, as is the aircraft's incredible range. Its toughness, durability, and unique appearance have even earned it the nickname Warthog. Designed to carry vast amounts of bombs and ammunition, the A-10 is a very formidable opponent and a great tool for the battlefield. No matter the type of aircraft being used, successfully pulling off an austere landing is no easy task. Fortunately, militaries worldwide have had access to a powerful trainer, the AT-6 Wolverine. This is the armed version of the Beechcraft T-6 Texan, a single-engine turboprop flight trainer used for everything from basic flight training to advanced maneuvers. The AT-6 operates very well at low speeds, thanks to its wingspan being nearly equal to the length of the fuselage. This, combined with its light weight, allows the AT-6 to take off and land in almost any condition. Since it is a propeller-driven aircraft, 
it is naturally accustomed to traveling at lower speeds and does not have to worry as much about debris intake. Here you can see several modified AT-6 landing on an improved dirt runway at Melrose Air Force Base in New Mexico. The AT-6's small size and great maneuverability make it a great candidate for aerial combat training. Typically, a student pilot will fly with a more experienced instructor sitting in the second seat. The plane is capable of carrying a small complement of bombs, missiles, and rockets, earning it the designation of light attack aircraft. In most cases, however, the AT-6 is specifically relegated to training duty. As air forces around the world look for new ways to operate more efficiently and safely, lightweight trainers like this will probably become more and more popular. Not only can they take off and land virtually anywhere, but they are less expensive to operate than their large-scale, jet-powered counterparts. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.